Right, this is a little bit of a, uh, this is a sort of fast blast report thing. Uh, first of all, I get phone calls sometimes and I have to run like hell to do things uh, in this time Wales. So it brought me to the opportunity to go to Wales and I met Miriam there because she was doing an awful lot of work there and experiences with standing stones. So that was very good. So I shot some video in one of the places that we ended up staying at, which uh, was during the events which happened over the weekend, which is the Aurora Borealis, which is the massive, I think it was six uh, uh, hits from the sun, which caused massive Aurora in the red spectrum. As low as uh, I got a friend of mine that sent some pictures, uh, a photograph from uh, La Palma or the Canaries, and they could see the red glow down there. So without getting too complicated about this whole thing, the Earth's magnetic field is severely stressed. It's the magnetic north and south have moved 40 degrees in round figures and increasingly moving to, to a polar reversal in progress now. The net magnetic field uh, in where we are, uh, sorry, in the European uh, zone, there are some scientists saying the acute attack on this will be in Central Europe in terms of meaningful loss of um, whatever the hell is going to happen. And that's really based in the German, French and English region of where the maximum effects of solar disruption would happen, is happening. So uh, because I'm doing a fast blast to speak very quickly and I try to get things done quickly because I'm losing the light here. I'm very tired. We've just come back from Wales today. We have very important experiences there. I was in Klangolan, where, which is probably mispronounced. And that's where we had the um, Able Danger Conference, the Children's March Conference thing, uh, which was a lot way back with uh, the beautiful Christina and Karen Naismith Robertson. They did a nice report there. There were other certain people at that conference. Able Danger since went to jail and his handler died uh, and all lots of sort of events happened there. But we had a nice trip on a train. So I'm going to include some blogs on the train, the choo-choo train. Uh, this is very important that this kind of technology is maintained because when we have the solar flare activity, the only stuff we can rely on is hard mechanical stuff that works. So showing you a choo-choo train at this time is very important. Now, what they've done with the railway line up there is they've actually isolated. They've actually put flats and bought the land so that any prospect of that sort of stuff being able to migrate and be useful at other parts of the rail network isn't actually available as far as that particular choo-choo train is concerned. It's very nice, some very nice pictures, so we'll include them. So it's May the 13th here, so uh, getting back to this, the BASIS conference, uh, BASIS is running this, see that, which I don't know if it's reversed, but anyway, we'll present it anyway, and that is happening 15th and 16th of June. The bottom line is uh, Miriam just read out some material on the 15 minute cities going ahead with Amsterdam and, asso and closely associated cities in um, Holland. This is still going on. All of this stuff is still going on. So uh, the, the, the cabal, whatever you want to call them, are continuing with their plans. And this is in sequence with this solar activity. So they have got deeply laid plans. It's all to imprison us and kill us all. Um, it's very bad, this. Now, the whole point about the solar flare activity is that uh, normally, um, if we have a normal situation where we have solar flares and a monitor minimum, we have a magnetic field. But there's something making the magnetic field move, which means the protection we have from all these solar flares and this activity, which normally rises during a monitor minimum, we are having much less protection. This is going to have very severe effects on the atmosphere. Lots of rain, uh, which will then get colder. Lots of very cold uh, activity um, in the higher ap atmospheric levels. That then gets very cold and then it falls in a column right down to the surface in, as ice. And that's when we have instantaneous freezing on the surface instantaneous ice ice stuff falling this is what the world does it happens all the time it's just happening with us and it's happening with us with a with a with an in progress um 
polar reversal. But the cabal and all these bastards, and no good words in the English language are fit for them, uh, no bad words are fit to describe them. The bottom line is that we are under attack. The, the, um, the situation is very clear that the powers that be have been engaging in rituals and uh, inter inter interdimensional communication of various types for a very long time. A lot of this has uh, been uh, truncated and explained very well by the late Chris Thomas. Uh, Chris Thomas's work in bases is, is exactly what's happening and what he predicted and what he's talking about is happening. Now I'm also gonna mention Elena Denan's books. This is a very important book. Uh, this is her color version of this. But I'm also going to put a caution and warning on Elena Denan's work. I am I did three interviews with her. I thought we got on really well. One of them was banned. Elena has since refused to talk or have any engagement with me. I think Elena, in short, has been got at. And that's a very serious sign. In other words, very simply and very clearly, uh, one of the terms and one of the mechanisms of, of war is in the uh, described very simply in the art of war is you fool your enemy into thinking that it's all okay the enemy's all gone and uh, it's all going to be hunky dory there's an awful lot of information about the act of self-replicating ai uh, in p show levels that's that's a million times smaller than nano uh, technologies which is in the body self-replicating self-organizing uh, thinking uh, bio pisho bots constructing uh, material within human bodies and probably other uh, uh, organic flesh to make them into cyborgs and this is what we've been talking about at bases for a long time now the other thing which happened uh, when over the weekend was the eurovision song contest and there was a film on, uh, I think it was probably the BBC carrying it. There was a film on, and when we turned on the TV, when we went into the, the, the log cabin, a beautiful log cabin, there they were. This is how the AI actually informs you. Just at a crucial time, you walk in, and there they were on the TV, lots of uh, self, uh, of, of, of these egg suspended uh, breeding sacks, and the movie was all about this. They're running this before the Eurovision Song Contest. So they're telling us, that's what they're telling us, human beings will only be made in these sacks. Just as described by Barry King way back in, in 1994, and that's what they were building uh, with the Germans um, constructing strange looking humans, bio labs, soul replacement. In other words, you create the, 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 the human or whatever, the, the cyborg. And then you put something in it to make it work. Uh, that's what uh, was explained by other sources. And that's what we find out at down at Clyde's house. Again, that was that was information from James Casbo. A lot of that work find we find uh, that uh, the facilities in Wiltshire were connecting with a lot of other facilities, uh, labs and other breeding chambers. But the point about this is that these breeding chambers, these uh, these chambers where the manufactured creature, human would or, or human beings were going in there, having their soul taken out and a non-human soul put in, and all of this is uh, in indicated by these people who have all these tattoos and things, mm -hmm. that the being inside the uh, the human uh, bioframe or wetware is not human. And this is a means of making humans impossible to actually live in their own designated bio, for, bio sacks or wetware. So there's an awful lot of swapping of um, human souls being taken out, non-humans being put in. The key to this is, and to be fair to Elena Danan, this is what she, with the Negamak, mentioned, that... Uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, the reptilians have gone, the Draco have gone. And again, there are people sending me messages, uh, e emails and things about the Alpha Draconis. And I'm misnaming the Alpha Draconis with the Draco. Uh, and there's subtle details, very important details. There. The details are in these books. Now, the point about these books is that they're based on the original Russian. And she says it in this, uh, that these, are, these diagrams are... Uh, these drawings that are in this 
are based on the uh, detailed uh, alien uh, races manual that the Russians had going back 1950s. Now, she's, Elena has said all this, but the bottom line is the reason why I'm saying that these things are need, you need to know, you need to see these, um, is because I have witnesses who say, I have seen this, I have encountered these. Multiple witnesses are saying, I've seen this stuff. This, these images that Elena has drawn are valid. Now, if there's other, if there's other undercurrents and other scenarios going on here, okay, that's all in the detail, right? Grow, grow up and wake up. This is very important. So this weekend, when we got hit by those solar flares, when the solar flares go from green to red and the higher frequencies, uh, or the lower frequencies going from green down to red, that's very bad. It's very serious, this. Uh, and we're being lied to right across the board by uh, others. So um, it's all, it's not very, it's not very, it's not rocket science. If you're going to invade a species or do whatever you're going to do, you take over those who are in charge and then you infiltrate within the, uh, the species and do what you've got to do and you, you take it over. It's, it's simple, right? And who's in charge isn't the prime minister or whatever, or the king or whatever. There's other people in charge. And then there are elites who have the information, have the knowledge. And again, John Irwin, John Irwin's information way back 90, uh, when he got that stuff in, with his team in the 1950s, um, uh, they got the interdimensional data technology based on the ancient stuff. And again, spinning forward to the right now, you've got the uh, massive structure, otherwise uh, nicknamed as the cathedral in the Antarctic, which have got these uh, beings in there. And again, uh, Elena Danan has been mentioning this, but with other information, uh, Linda Howe and other people with whistleblowers and information coming through different sources, you've got this massive structure in the Antarctic, and they're all waiting for the for the rotation of the Earth to rotate round, and then this will all be unhappy. This will all defrost. They know this is going to happen again. That is why in this conference, this is base is actual, and we got. Um, on June the 14th and 15th, uh, 15th and 14th of June at the Bouverie Hall. Uh, the key to this, to some of these speakers, Syed Noah, we've been recording a lot of uh, English language uh, material with him. His data is talking about when the sun disk moved from one part of the horizon, rising one part of the horizon and rising, uh, and rising on another part. That's when the earth or the earth's crust moved round. So this is encoded in the Egyptian material. Uh, we've also got a number of other people. Mark Pilkington is going to be talking about, um, okay, basically base of 2024 is, Mark Pilkington will be talking about the UFOs and the Pentagon. In other words, the CIA are saying one thing, the Pentagon are saying another thing. There's a lot of controversy about that. He's going to talk about that. Uh, Jill Kirkham, uh, She's going to be talking about the subtleties of the ET thing again. Uh, she's a new kid on the block in terms of uh, being on, on stage. Some very important stuff there. Deborah Hatswell, she is a brilliant lady. She's been working for a long time, getting a huge amount of information on the indigenous interdimensional hybrid, uh, interdimensional beings like the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, uh, cryptids and creatures, and looking at the whole UFO existing living beings here in other realms, uh, that's very important. We must understand what's here to start with. And they've seen us come and they've seen us go. To go. They've seen us go. Um, Jeannie Rebound is synchronicity and astro cartography. Now, the synchronicity thing is what I just talked about when you walked in and there on the TV. There is the European, the the just a film just before the uh, Eurovision Song Contest, and there on screen are all these creatures being made in breeding chambers, and then follow on from that, uh, the Eurovision Song Contest and the British entry was absolutely as clear as day. Order of the Black Sun, they actually show a black sun, they show these creatures with uh, black wings on them, and they turn around and display these dancers. And remember, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Madonna was doing her dancing and they were using the EBU link 
and the Eurovision Song Contest to do ritual black magic in plain sight. And they were doing that again on this one. And they do this sort of stuff for the Olympics, the Olympics 2012 Olympics. A lot of people, if you can get back to see all that, they had all the nurses, they had Boris, they had all of that. Uh, explaining what their plans were way back in 2012 they're pl planning all this and it's there in plain sight and there was a young researcher who blew the whistle on that young a young man only in his 30s and he killed him because he was blowing the whistle on that okay you got mark rayworth converging into separation now mark rayworth has already described in some of the interviews we've done two chats with him uh, about the rituals that the masons have been doing and how they've been engaging with these um uh, beings and having full in interlinks with them so this again ex should tell you that the ufo disclosure thing will never happen if you think it's going to come from 3d and somebody's going to land on the white ice lawn and say you know nanu nano or whatever it is they're engaging with these creatures they're engaging with people or creatures who as according to elena's stuff and others are enemies of all life here and the strategic agenda of this, like Agenda 21, Agenda 30, which Sandy Adams and others, um, Sandy Adams and uh, also, um, uh, 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 ooh, where is she? But I haven't put her on it. Um, she spoke at the last conference. The Sandy Adams' team, um, her name escapes me because I'm doing this fast blast in one take and we're going to get this through through this is that the agenda is very clear there. Bob Osborne explained very clearly about the agenda going on at in Cornwall. And all these other people, the names too many to mention, are at Cornwall again. Those are in the interviews. There's a hell of a lot of information there. And we're going to pack this in on Basin 24 Summer Seminar. You've got Julie Phelps. She talked about the, uh, all sorts of technology. You've got Thomas Mikey Jensen. Now, Thomas uh, was involved with another major organization organize, organizing things in the background. It's a unique pleasure, privilege that he's done a huge amount of work organizing basis uh, tv.com and uh, organizing basis tv.org, which is essentially replacing the basis project.org. And he's noticed a lot of the stuff on Mars, the published pictures, the published pictures that NASA have published, and he's noticed an awful lot of things in those pictures uh, so he'll be talking mark rayworth will be explaining these rituals uh, Jeannie rebane will be uh giving a little bit of a light load on this very nice deborah hatswell doing her work brilliant she's a keynote speaker now we have talked to some of the bases three researchers this is to say uh, i won't mention the names but they were going to be able to talk as a major last minute thing, but they've been under a lot of pressure to shut up, which is why basis three, the Rendlesham Forest UFO events, too hot to handle. So much of their work is just not known, not really known, and it's all on basis three. And finally, you can see all that at basistv.com. It's a subscription thing. There's a huge amount of published work there, and you've got to get across this stuff. We're in real trouble here right we have a moving uh we have an atmospheric situation you can hear the rain now it's going to get a lot worse it's going to get colder and it's going to be catastrophic effects happening and we're so close to this on two levels one the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is approaching a level which will make plants incapable of manufacturing the tissue they need to be a plant from the atmosphere, the nitrogen and the um, energy from the sun and manufacturing chlorophyll and all that and, and physically building themselves because they need carbon dioxide to do that. Carbon dioxide is the, is the gas of life. And these bastards want to take that away. Which part of they are killing you and wiping you out do you not understand? And all of the levels, all of the uh, organizations right across the world have all been contaminated they are not helping us they are doing everything they can to wipe us out and there are major people within those groups who know this and they're trying to help as well we the praetorian guard has fallen as far as things are concerned now i know there are people who are doing the love and light stuff and they're saying oh it's happy slappy 
Well, they can do that. And if that's happening, that's great. And then there's people saying, well, if you talk like this, Miles, you're just propagating all this bad stuff and it's going to be in your manufactured reality. That's also very true and very important. We have got the ability to de-exist these things out of our reality. We are sovereign and all this stuff. Very nice flowery words. We can de-exist this disaster, which is these creatures. But right now, they're producing regulations and they're locking us down into a climate emergency, which is a fake from their perspective because they're blaming carbon dioxide. And this is happening. I'm shocked to hear Amsterdam is going to go to 15 minute cities. I've just been to London last week. It's a nightmare. The 20, 20 mile an hour zones, all that stuff. The, the scale of surveillance. And I don't think all of it's working. In fact, I don't think a lot of it's actually working. But they are absolutely determined to shove us into this lockdown for harvesting. They didn't, or so far, have not managed to um, kill the vast population that they had hoped to. And a lot of that is in progress. It's not necessarily the progress that they hope and wanted to. But anyway, that is basis 2024. Be there or be square. That's 15th and 16th of June. There are a couple of other conferences. This is, uh, we're talking on May the 13th, Monday, May the 13th, just come back from Wales. Um, very important thing. There's another big conference, which is going to be, which is Alternative View 14 at the Leonardo Hotel. Now these guys are taking the brilliant work of Ian R. Crane and his team, the late Ian R. Crane, and they're starting it up again and they're getting it going. And they're trying to get back up to the level that Ian was operating at. Uh, they've given me a, a discount code. I think it's called Miles 10. That's Miles with the number 10. If you put that in, when you book your tickets at the Alternative View Conference 14, uh, that's uh, just put Alternative View Conference 14 and book AV14 tickets, and it will bring you to a ticket thing. That, that's the page that you'll get, and just press that button, and you can book your tickets. That is on uh, at the Leonardo Hotel in Milton Keynes. Very nice hotel. It's on all day Sunday, the 26th of May. There are hotels there, and that hotel itself, to, that you can stay at. It's really good if you could be there the Saturday night and stay and discuss and be part of the team and people like that uh, on the Sunday night. I think if you book the Saturday, Sunday, they give a bit of a discount, whatever. And that will have Richard Vobes. This has done a lot of really good work. Um, explain to ordinary everybody, every people. He's brilliant at what he's doing. Wendy Stacy, I'm not too sure who she is. Ian Simpson, Lucy Wyatt. It's Lucy Wyatt. We'll also be speaking later on in June with um, uh, with Sandy uh, Adams. Sandy Adams is, of course, the key to explaining the various horrendous agendas which are in work, enshrined in law, and their plans. And also, uh, the, at this uh, May the 26th event, Sunday, May the 26th, at the Leonardo Hotel, that's only a couple of weeks away, Dr. Manji Sananta Lawson. She's an Indian astronomer, uh, I think she did the like the punk astronomy thing, uh, punk punk astronomy, something like that. Uh, very happy, very jolly, uh, ex good lady. Johan Oldenkamp, I'm not too sure what she does. And of course, it's uh, primarily hosted by Gary Fraun, who's essentially taken over the role of Ian Crane at the Alternative View site. Get that, okay? And I think that's about it. We'll run... Uh, the blog that we did that I did at this wonderful uh, place in uh, in Wales, absolutely wonderful place, and that was the night after the um, the great the, the huge amount of solar flares which happened. What happens is you get the solar flares, you see it, the light we get in about nine minutes, but the actual plasma, the actual solar wind and the particles take roughly about 36 hours to hit. And that hits the upper atmosphere, which is no, no longer protected to the extent it used to be. Uh, depending on where you are, it's been uh, depleted by up to 40 percent 
in some areas, it's particularly over the Atlantic region, it's depleted to the extent that the radiation is almost hitting the surface of the ocean. There's lots of major issues on that. I think I've done enough on this. I'm looking at 25 minutes on this. God help us all. Um, the light's going down here. You don't, probably can't see. And uh, that's it for now. I'll be to run the blog with some nice things happening in Wales. Okay, this is a blog. Uh, welcome to Wales, and we are in the middle of a lovely Welsh village. And there's a wonderful pub there. And uh, there's a TR4. Look at that. That's called a proper motor car. So I'm here, we're staying here with Miriam. She's doing a lot of very important work. Uh, but last night we had severe solar flares. Uh, well, actually they happened, I think, on Thursday. And the effects of those solar flares actually arrived, causing m major red skies and aurora borealis. And I've got pictures from the Canary Islands where they had them down there. This is extremely serious, and I've just been talking with a professor or an educated elderly academic in, um, uh, in Holland, where they accepted that uh, the region of France, southern Germany and Great Britain would be hit most severely with this uh, solar activity, which is interesting because that's the source of a lot of very bad people who've conducted very bad things across the world. Uh, the other thing is that I'm actually very, very impressed at the number of ordinary people who know all about the solar flares. I mean, it's uh, these are ordinary folk, like bar staff at Weatherspoons, for God's sake, in Newtown, know about solar flares. So strangely, there's a heck of a lot of people around here in this beautiful part of Wales who are tuned in to the solar flare situation, which is very interesting. So this is my blog. We've just done an OB today. It's an outside broadcast for a client, which is welcome. And I have not gone to a place called Tenerife, but we're here in Wales and it's a wonderful place and we'll be staying in log cabins up there if you can ever find them. So this is a blog in the middle of Wales after severe solar activity hitting us. As five I think hit in quick succession only about 12 hours ago and there's lots of video of it and stuff on the internet etc. And this is a frequently flooding river, which is why this wall has collapsed. So there it is. Bit of a blog. We have incoming. What a beautiful place. There's a hot tub here. And uh, outstanding. The sheep do, do what they've got. And uh, there's e they're not emus, they're something or some other thing. They're sort of down there somewhere. And this is one of several beautiful places here. When you can eventually find it, they need a sign. And uh, they live off grid. It's absolutely fantastic here in Wales. And uh, it's really nice. There's other chalets up there. And we might see the Aurora Borealis again tonight. Beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. Peaceful Wales. Oh, 
unnatural with sheep and emus or whatever. It's very difficult to find this beautiful place. Maybe that's a good thing. Hello. I'm not even use. There's some other beautiful animal. They're not kiwis. They're not ostriches. How are you? How are you? Beautiful animal. How are you? Very inquisitive. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Taking pictures of me, taking pictures of you. Is it me? Uh, Miriam, so what's happening here? I don't know exactly. I wonder how they are going to turn the train. Well, I imagine it's they're going to reverse it. Yes. To look at what this is a beautiful there. engine. This is a beautiful engine. I got a bunch of DVDs. Uh, and they were all about the, cl the closure of British Rail and all that, uh, before it and all that, in the 60s. Yeah. But these machines are going to become uh, much more important. Well, this was built in Swindon Works in 1938 uh, for the Great Western Railway. And uh, very sadly, it was the biggest locomotive works in Europe. Wow. And uh, it was closed down uh, by the British government because... Oh, excuse me. Brian Coffey down so half of the shopping centre, some of its houses, and there's a very small museum that was completed with 150 years old. Okay. So are you going to reverse this? Reverse. Are, are you going to go up there and back or what? Or? Yeah, we'll go around the loop, and we'll come round on platform two, and we'll come back onto the stop. Ah, we've right. Got, that's... We've got another bit of time. Uh, ten feet, we leave. How and do you we'll... turn this? No, we can't turn it. We can just run it up to the end of the line. Yeah. Yeah, so originally this line ran straight across Wales and yeah. went to Barmouth. Right, so okay. To say, in the summer, this was a very, very busy line. It took a lot of energy to ship the tourist traffic. Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Chester, uh, Wrexham traffic. Up to uh, uh, up this holiday camp in Batali and onto, onto Barmouth. Wow. In the winter, it was quiet. There was a bit okay. of race and cattle. Um, but, but it never stopped running, right? Up until 19, end of 1964. Then it stopped for a bit? Uh, it did because uh, a gentleman called Dr. Beachy was giving control. Yeah, he's a German asset and, and his job was to uh, sabotage British uh, infrastructure. That's a true story. Yeah. Well, but you're keeping it going. Right. Yeah. Yep. 
bus is going to go the other way now. Can it just keep it it's on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Miriam, you've seen Platform 2. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's fascinating. But I also like the fact that the, the ones who, who run the engine are very aware of the importance of the history. Yes, absolutely. And it's right, well, let's see what we can do in the waiting room and enjoy this beautiful station restored by volunteers. <laughs> you can change your babies here. Yes, I know. Well, if they don't work out, you can bring one back. You've got a few left there. Well, to no, take. <laughs> okay. This is all modern. It's uh, fully restored. Thunder lightning's coming after yesterday's event.
Well, almost time for us to join the train again. Probably better to get on. Enjoy the ride.